Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today's build is the Hungering Souls Necromancer. Now, Hungering Souls is a skill that just hasn't been used for a while. It did see some limelight when we got into the Bone Curse being applied on hit, and Bone Curse was then able to hit multiple enemies, and Bone Curse was doing really good damage, but that was nerfed. And then Hungering Souls itself has just been kind of lagging behind the times, and it's a very underutilized skill. But we've been able to stack enough damage when converting it to fire to actually make it worth it. And Soul Fire's rework, the unique, makes it very, very possible to do this very easily without having to go into the single node or single projectile node. And with that, we're going to have multiple projectiles. We're going to have a lot of damage coming from them. They're going to have increased speed and range so they can get quite a ways ahead of you. And then, of course, we're going to take advantage of all of the more modifiers that we can. And one of those is that... If you have three minions, exactly three minions, you can have 150% more damage. So we're going to be running the dual golems along with a solo cryomancer mage, which is going to have them have really good survivability, and then they're going to be really easy to resummon, so that all you have to do is just hit golems once and summon one mage, and you'll be able to do that with just two clicks of the button. So getting three of them is very, very easy to do. You know, you won't be struggling to have three, you know, accidentally summoning too many or summoning not enough. It's almost impossible to do because you just summon them each once and boom, you have your three companions. We'll also be running Dreadshade. We're doing that just so that you can get the cast speed and the armor while you're inside of the aura. So you kind of want to stick around the minions, although you don't need to. This is a very high health build. You're going to have idols that increase your health. You, of course, have the 24% increased health from the passive tree. And then on gear, basically just run a lot of life. And in Zangwe's Last Steps of the Living is going to give you a lot of ward, and that's what your survivability will be based around. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills, the interactions, and just how all this works. For skills, I'm running Dreadshade, Hungering Souls, Summon Bone Golem, Summon Skeleton Mage, and Rip Blood. For Dreadshade, I've got 2 points in Spectral Presence, 4 points in Grim Fate, 1 point in Symbiotic Apparition, so it affects both us and the allies. 3 points in Dying Coven so we can get 45% increased cast speed, 3 points in Flesh Harvest, 1 point in Dread Plague, 1 point in Marty Doom. We are stacking a lot of intelligence on this build so we're going to get a lot of armor from this when we stay inside of that aura. 3 points in Lingering Doom, 1 point in Pernicious Pact, and 1 point in Egoism. For Hungering Souls, we do have plus 2 levels to this. You don't have to have the plus 2 levels. Basically, it's just going to increase the range that the Hungering Souls can go. However, the more points you get, if you do get an Exalt item with plus 4, there are more areas that you can put into it. You can start to get Ward, you can reduce the mana cost, some other things. But basically, you have the same amount of damage that you're going to get out of it. I've got 5 points in Ravenous for that spell Necrotic Damage, plus 30. That's a huge amount of added spell damage to it. 4 points in Grave Bond gives plus 60% more multiplicative damage. 3 points in Necromantic Emanation for 6% more damage per minion. We'll have 3 minions, so this is 18% more damage. Not very much, but it is another form of more damage, so it helps. 3 points in Unholy Trinity, so when you have 3 minions, exactly 3 minions, and that's what this build is based around, you'll get 150% more damage with it, which really bumps up the damage that it does. And we got 2 points in Reaper's Gaze for a kill threshold of 10%, 1 point in Dominant of Undeath, this will reduce the mana cost, and that of course is to get into Life Hunt. 4 points here lets you cast 20% faster, and it has 40% more speed and range. Now if you have a couple of more points, if you do have an Exalted Tier 7 item, or if you want to move some points around, I recommend taking out of the speed and range. And you can put into more of the mana cost being reducted. You can get into the mana cost and the ward on kill chance. If you really want and you don't want as many projectiles, you're okay with losing them. Or you want a higher mana cost, you can get another 5 base necrotic damage. It reduces your projectiles by 2, but you can also increase your projectiles with soul swarm. But this does increase the mana cost. So you can play around with it a little bit and find out how many projectiles it is that you like. How much mana cost you like to spend with it and just kind of find that happy medium for your playstyle. For Summon Bone Golem, you want to have two golems. The reason for that is they both get summoned every time you use the skill. So that's two of your companions every time that you summon it. So we got four points in Amalgam of Rogues, one point in Twinned Golems, one point in Ivory Twin. This allows you to 
have a bone golem and whatever other golem you've spec into. If if you spec into one, in this case, we went with the fire golem. We've got three points in charged bones, one point in pyro golem, three points in world prior, two points in amalgam of sentinels, four points in tower of bones. Increases their size and their threat generated. There'll be two of them, and you're hoping that they kind of bring in all the heat on themselves so that you're not being attacked. You can spec this really however you want. I just recommend that you do put at least one point in Twin Golem so that you get two of them. So that as soon as you summon it, you automatically have two companions. And that makes it a lot easier to stay at your three total because we're going to run a solo mage. And since you can't have more than that, no matter how many times you summon it, you're just refreshing their health, basically. For Summon Skeleton Mage, like I said, we're specking into just one. So we got four points in Splintered Dominion. This will give 100% chance for extra projectiles. Then we have one point Archmage. This will make it to where you can only have one mage total. So you can have two Golems maximum, one mage maximum. That's three maximum minions, no matter how many times you cast them. So if they start to die, you can just cast them again. It just replaces what you have, and it's going to keep you at that three companion limit. Got one point in Argonautic Speed, three points in Putrid Essence, one point in Pryomancers, one point in Inferno, three points in Grey Merchant, this is where they'll get a lot of every time they do a critical strike chance, 15% of their maximum health is going to be replenished. This is what keeps them alive for a very long time. 5 points in Cellar Mortis and 1 point in Grave Tide. And then for Rip Blood, the entire point of Rip Blood is to generate ward for us if we target our minions, but it's also meant to give us mana. In case we do too much Hungry Souls or spam our minions too much, this will give us mana back. We got 3 points in Hemomancer, 1 point in Stench of Blood. 5 points in Quenching, one, 3 points in Mana Feast, 1 point in Hematology, 1 point in Marrow Drinker, 4 points in Arcane Absorption, and 2 points in Run Dry. For passives, I got 21 points in the Accolade class with 8 points in Blood Aura, 5 points in Blood Pact, and 8 points in Forbidden Knowledge. In the Necromancer, I got 56 points with 8 points in Elixir of Hunger. 7 points in Risen Army, 5 points in Grave Thorns, 8 points in Unearthed Arms, 8 points in Tyrant, 5 points in Frantic Summons, 5 points in River of Bones, very important for this as it's bugged and it gives you a lot more damage since we've converted Leech to damage, 10 points in Hearsay, and then we have 25 points in the Lich, it's actually more than that, this just caps out at 25. We got 8 points in Crippling Insight, 6 points in Survival of the Cruel, 8 points in Dance with Death, 1 point in Hollow Lich to convert all of your health leech into increased damage. This is just a double bonus for you because 1 we don't want leech and 2 we want more damage. And then I got 8 points in Unclosing Wounds and 5 points in Apocrypha. And then for items, idols and blessings. For the idols, we got 1x2s that increase health and flat health, and then we got a bunch of 1x3s that give minions fire damage, and they give you increased spell damage while at low health, which you will be at at all times. You can also swap these out, do a little less damage, but just throw in all health idols, and that will increase your survivability. There are three uniques in this build. Those three uniques will be in Zanguius, Last Steps of the Living, and Soul Fire. Soul Fire automatically converts Hungering Souls to fire damage. And then, of course, you'll have a Ignite instead of Possessing, and you're going to have extra Ignite Chance. So it converts everything to fire for you, so you don't have to do that inside the skill tree, and that'll make it to where you don't have to take that single projectile node, which is what makes this good for multi-projectiles and doing lots of damage. Then for crafted items, we have a Scepter and we have an Offhand Catalyst. And I'm just going to hover over all of them real quick so you can see, you know, what affixes that we're going for. This build planner, of course, will be in the written guide, which will be in the description below for that link. And then for blessings, nothing really fancy on these. Again, just going to hover over them. We got some extra critical strike chance. I believe that we went with critical strike avoidance. And then, of course, as you can, you can do increased armor. Or for the final two, you can really do anything that you want. I went for Frailty on Hit, as that was just kind of one of those damaging things that's going to make you take less damage, since we're not building Endurance at all in this build, since we're a low life and can't really take advantage of that Endurance threshold. 
And then for the character sheet, as you can see, we're not capped on all resistances, but we do have at least some. Capping these will increase your survivability, but it's more important to stack as much life and to get 100% critical strike avoidance than to worry about capping a resistance versus having about 50% of each. We only have 11% armor, but this will go up when we're inside Dreadshade, and our damages will also go up, and that cast speed will also go up. So let's go ahead and first I'll look at the Hungering Souls tooltip DPS. So you have about 8,000 dps with how the build set up but once you get the three minions which is really simple one cast of the golems is automatically going to give you two which is the cap so every time you cast it you'll just automatically get two of them and then you can only have one summon skeleton mage so no matter how many times i summon this i'm just going to have the one that gives you the three uh, minions that you need total and that's going to give you a lot more damage so if you look at your tooltip dps now we jumped up to 37,800 dps just for having three minions active which is huge you you could quadruple your damage output just by having three minions and we chose three of the tougher ones the golems and the solo mage who can replenish their health on a crit just have a lot of tank ability and they don't die very often and recasting them is super easy then once you put yourself in a dread shade that's where your damage everything will take off so look at our damages they just skyrocketed we're at almost 2500 percent spell damage and as their health goes down this will go up we also have 40% damage reduction due to armor now. That also will go up as they lose health. So staying inside of that circle is going to tremendously increase your damage. If you look at our DPS now, we're talking 100,000 DPS with Hungering Souls, which is ridiculous. And then to show you what kind of damage you're doing with it as I fire Hungering Souls, you can see that we're critting for you know almost 20k damage. You have about 60% crit chance with this build, so you're going to be critting quite often and doing quite a bit of damage. Now remember, each one of these projectiles, they can't all home in on the same enemy, but once you have that cast speed going, look how fast we're casting that. Mana will become somewhat of an issue, that's why I didn't do the extra projectiles. But then you just cast Rip Blood real quick, hit your, hit your enemies with some Rip Blood, and you can do it. Now, if you don't want the health back on Ripplet, I, I recommend that on the right side you go into the gaining ward instead of gaining health, which is something that I'll eventually expect this to do. I just haven't done it yet as I don't use it super often. But you can see with that kind of damage, you're just absolutely annihilating things. And that's going to be it for this build guide. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some gameplay. And as always, stay safe, travelers.